千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. As always, I want to extend my welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware, as we are ready ourselves for this sacred process in the Tao with one another. This is one of the more famous stories from Zhuangzi. It is called "The Mantis Hunts the Cicada." And the story goes like this. I want to present the、uh, a quick paraphrased version of it, and the reason is because. It is、uh, also available for everyone in book form. I'll talk about that momentarily. Here's the story about the mantis hunts the cicada. One day, Zhuangzi was walking through the woods. He wandered near an orchard. He was enjoying the day. He was admiring the scenery. When he heard a sound from above in the sky, Zhuangzi looked up, and he saw a strange bird. That bird was flying toward him. The bird seemed strange because Zhuangzi had never seen a bird quite like it before. It had a very wide wingspan. It had huge eyes. He was trying to figure out what to make of it when it dipped low, and brushed his head as it flew past, much to his surprise and a bit of annoyance. So he thought to himself, "What kind of bird is this? Such large wings, but can't keep itself, cannot keep itself high up in the sky. Such big eyes, but..." It didn't seem to see me, and therefore bumped against me. So, Zhuangzi decided to go to go after the strange bird. He took out his slingshot, and he followed this bird. And he saw that the bird landed on a chestnut tree, so he approached silently. His intention was to hunt it down, was to take it down with his slingshot. So Zhuangzi got closer and closer. He saw an interesting scene unfolding before him. There was cicada tripping away in the tree, blissfully unaware of a mantis sneaking up behind it, ready to pounce. The mantis itself, focused on getting the cicada, was unaware that the strange bird that just landed was close to it. And was getting ready to snap it up with its huge beak. So Zhuangzi saw the irony in this situation, because the bird was not aware of Zhuangzi approaching, just like the mantis was not aware of the bird right behind it, and the cicada was not aware of the mantis ready to pounce on it. What a pattern! It seems like a chain of being oblivious from one to the next. So Zhuangzi thought clearly: this is a pattern of the Tao in life. All living things are looking to gain some sort of advantage, but then in the process of that, this 
action imposes a limitation. Generally speaking, the potentially gain right in front of you causes you to forget the potential disaster right behind you. These are all connected. So Zhuang Zi got ready with a slingshot. He had the bird targeted. He was congratulating himself for his new insights about this pattern. Then he was startled with a voice behind him. Hey, you, what are you doing in my orchard? Zhuang Zi jumped. It was the gardener in charge of the orchard. In going after the bird, Zhuang Zi did not even realize that he was trespassing into private property. He probably went past the sign without noticing. He was so preoccupied, he did not even hear the gardener coming up behind him. So in sheer surprise and panic, he dropped his slingshot and made a hasty exit out of the orchard. The gardener, still thinking that he was there to steal something like the chestnuts, continued yelling after him very angrily. So this experience had a profound effect on Zhuang Zi. It lasted for days. One of his students noticed that he seemed depressed and asked, Master, you look rather unhappy today. Is something wrong? So Zhuang Zi told the students about the story from his experience and Zhuang Zi sighed. He said, I was so fixated on external appearance, I completely lost sight of the essence. Lao Zi, my teacher, always said that no matter what place you go to or visit, you should be mindful of the rules of that environment. I forgot all about that when I went into the orchard. The student thought about this and said, but master, that seems like a minor mistake anyone can make. Zhuang Zi said, well, the issue goes a lot deeper than that. The cicada, mantis, and bird were all unaware of the danger looking behind them. This right there was a great lesson for me, but I did not learn that lesson well enough. I too was unaware of the gardener right behind me. This is why I am unhappy with myself because I can see I still have a long way to go in cultivating the Tao. The end. So what can we take away from this story by Zhuang Zi? There are some major points here. First, let us note that excessive desires can cause tunnel vision. That is, we can only see what is right in front of us. We see not what's around us, what's behind us. This means we must cultivate situational awareness, sort of a panoramic vision, the ability to be perceptive in all directions, and to constantly keep everything around us into consideration. So this is the attention that we need to cultivate in the external environment. What about internally? What does Zhuang Zi say about that? Well, Zhuang Zi is pointing out, it is possible for us to be so attracted, so overwhelmed, by distractions, this is nowhere more true than in the material world. So the story isn't really about the cicada or the mantis or the strange bird or Zhuang Zi or the gardener. It's about what we get distracted by. 
in the world. This is the reason why Zhuangzi is basically saying, we need to learn the lesson better, just as he should have learned the lesson better. To cultivate internal composure, to be able to maintain clarity in the midst of chaos. And in the material world, when are we not right in the middle of chaos? It is rare that we have moments of peace and tranquility in the material world, which is why it is all the more important for us to have that internal composure so we can call upon peace and tranquility anytime that we need it, no matter what is happening around us. Lastly, yet another major point that Zhuangzi is making is about all of us, one another. There is a way for us to help one another because there is a reason why we're all in this world together. We can help other people see what they cannot see for themselves. Conversely, other people can help us see what we cannot see for ourselves. This is like the saying goes, no matter how great your vision, you can never see the back of your own head. Quite true, at least not without, not without the help of mirrors. So this is a great reason for us to travel together in this journey, for us to study together. You can inform me of things I cannot see and vice versa. This story comes from my book, The Tao of Happiness. In part two, Child Advisories, you will find this story from Zhuangzi. And this story is the reason why Lao Tzu wrote his lines, do not show the desired things so their hearts will not be confused. I think Zhuangzi himself would admit that when he was fixating on the strange bird, his heart was not at its most clear. His perception was not at the utmost clarity, and that's why he himself was no different than the bird or the mantis or the cicada. Now, we're in a position to summarize what we have learned so far with this table here. It is always important in the Tao for us to map the lessons from the advice to the ancient rulers to advice to ourselves in modern times. That is why you see the two rows there. The top line is in the context of the ancient wisdom and that in the context of the wise advisor telling the king what to do, what not to do. The bottom row is us living our modern lives where you are literally the king of your own destiny and you have Lao Tzu advising you on what to do and what not to do. So let's review. In the column for fame, which is glorifying the achievers. As a review, Lao Tzu said, do not glorify the achievers so the people will not squabble. Now we understand what that means. How do we apply that to ourselves? Do not play favorites. That's actually the, the equivalent of glorifying certain people singling them out for special treatment, that's playing favorites. Do not play favorites or discriminate against anyone. Treat everyone at every level of society with the same respect and courtesy. To discriminate against someone is the flip side of playing favorites. It's the yin and yang. And we want to be mindful of both. And we know that 
those who are able to treat everyone at every level of society with the same respect and courtesy, those are the good and kind people that we come across. And hopefully we become a good and, and kind person as well. There's been, uh, it's oftentimes been said that you can assess someone's character simply by observing how they treat those who serve them. In a restaurant setting, observe how someone treats the waiter. And you can then tell to some extent how that person really is. What about the boss who treats everyone at every level of the company as an equal? That is the boss who wins everyone's trust and respect. So the Tao really does work. It isn't practiced by everyone, but those who know how to apply it, those are the ones who will win over other people. Now, let's take a look at the next column over for greed. This is the one where Lao Tzu says, do not treasure goods that are hard to obtain so people will not become thieves. This is addressing material things, material objects. So when we map it to our modern existence, here is what we find. It is basically saying that we want to disengage from the material perspective. We want to value people above objects, and we want to value relationships above transactions. And I think when I say it like that, we can clearly see the truth in these words. What can be so valuable about material things that we place them above people? It seems ludicrous. And yet, you and I have seen people do that quite often. It doesn't matter what other people do, though. It's more important for us to pay attention to what we do. And then Lao Tzu also advised the king, do not show the desired things so their hearts will not be confused. When I lay it side by side like this, you can compare this column with the column to its left. And you can see right here that the desired things is a bigger, wider scope than just the goods that are hard to obtain. Because there are plenty of desired things beyond just the goods that are hard to obtain. Some of them, as I mentioned, are qualities, are intangibles. Others are goods that are easy to obtain, but command a very high price. Either way, Lao Tzu is basically saying that any of those desired things, not just precious jewelry and the like, any of those will confuse the heart, the hearts and minds of people. They do the same for us. If we allow them to, they can also confuse our hearts and minds. Therefore, when we map it to our world, this is about managing the desires in our lives. We don't want to subject ourselves to unnecessary distractions and temptations. This is why I say Tao cultivators are very mindful of their sensory input. They don't need to follow the dictates of society. They pick and choose what they will expose themselves to. They do so mindfully so they know what to expect and they know how to handle the, the seductive temptations and distractions that come their way. So we should follow that example. Finally, I want to present this graphic at the very bottom here. It shows a ripple in a pond of water that was originally still. When the water was still, it was clear and it reflected 
its surroundings accurately, precisely, clearly. This is a metaphor for the mind. What it says is that the mind has a preference for tranquility, a natural preference. That is the original state of the mind. Desires, which covers all of the above, desire for fame, desire for material things, de desire for other desired um, things that are not objects, all of these are like pebbles cast into the pond. Whenever you have a pebble that's being dropped into this peaceful, tranquility, still water, the water is no longer tranquil. The ripple forms on the surface and it spreads out, distorting the reflection. The reflection that was once clear becomes distorted. And the only way to address that is to limit the pebbles that you drop into it so that you can pick and choose carefully how and when you disturb the stillness of your mind. It is only when you really are doing it for a particular reason that you allow the ripple to occur. That is what I mean by managing sensory input. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.